general, how, how does the brown tide affect Damon like you? Um, in general, the brown tide would be something that if it's uh, for several years or even decades, it could l literally wipe out a whole, you know, many year classes of uh, shellfish. Um, hard clams, they seem to be able to live through it and still spawn and still, you know, have clams in the future. But like short-lived species, uh, have shorter lifespans, the uh, base scallops, 18 months, the uh, blue mussel, maybe two years. So once they die off and the water becomes foul with the brown algae, you kind of lose them. In 1985, when we had the first brown tide outbreak, um, there was a tremendous scallop crop coming on for that fall. It virtually probably eliminated 90% uh, of the scallops that we were, we'd been able to catch. Uh, when it finally left in the fall, there was a few baymen that went scalloping, but there was virtually no bug scallops or young of the year uh, recruitment. So in, in 1986, there was no scallop season. There was not a base scallop to be had anywhere on the east end. At that time, uh, the, the trustees, the Nature's Conservancy, Cornell, Crop Extension, and all the towns started to get together and they started to buy seed scallops from uh, Steve Melanowski over in Fisher's Island who had spawned some, and, uh, spawned some of the uh, scallops and they were kind of like out of that brown tide loop and we also got some scallops, uh, bay scallops from uh, clam farms up in uh, Maine so we managed to get a few you know hundred thousand and sprinkle them around and after a couple of years of reseeding the, the scallops started to come back a little bit but then we had another reoccurrence of the brown tide and that really set them back but continuing on from 85 to current, every year the Southampton Town Trustees, the Nature's Conservancy, Cornell Cooperative Extension, uh, the college, every year we continuously uh, do a reseeding of the bay scallops in the Peconics and the South Shore Estuaries. So it's an ongoing battle that we hope eventually the brown tide won't show up long enough so the scallop population gets back to a historic level and then we can have a, a reestablished fishery. It's one of the few fisheries that we've been able to reestablish uh, on a positive note going forward. Like the hard clams are pretty much as, uh, the same or slightly below like they were in the uh, 80s, the middle 80s. But the scallops, virtually from none to where they are now, uh, next year, uh, this coming fall, should be a very good harvest, probably as good as we've had since the brown tide, so I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I think it's a, it shows some positive uh, things in the environment. But then again, you come up here in, uh, in around in East Quag and Western Shinnecock Bay, the brown tide didn't take over until almost uh, the beginning of June. We were hoping it wouldn't, but it did, and now it's got another water quality issue. Um, initially, we had the uh, red algae up here that bloomed very early and it was closed for six weeks to shellfishing and uh, carnivorous gastropods or conchs. Um, that, that was a health risk. The brown tide has no health risk to humans. It just has a risk, you know, it, the risk comes on the shellfish end of it. Uh, when the uh, brown tide usually blooms, it coincides with the uh, shellfish and their spawning season. So you get virtually no recruitment for the next year several years of that and you've got a you know the youngest year class of clam is like six or seven years old so that that's showing you that there's the same amount of clams but there's no recruitment going forward and and the big hard clams are worth 10 cents where the little necks are worth 18 cents so those are the ones that you sell at the local restaurant so those are the ones that are most cherished and those are the ones that are most affected by the brown tide. Yes, they are. This has been uh, pretty tough on you personally in terms of how you earn your livelihood, right? You've been through a couple of really bad seasons. It's been tough for you, right? Well, in 1985, uh, when the first brown tide really hit in, um, I actually was in the process, or, or just shortly after, of uh, going to being uh, a full-time bayman in the uh, South Shore estuaries and, and the Peconics to going skimmer clam fishing in the Long Island Sound. V virtually, I had no choice because I could see that there was no bay scallops, we lost the mussels, um, the steamers died, you know, virtually every species that I could harvest and sell were basically being decimated by the brown tide. I mean, the problem with the, with the shellfish is they live initially, they filter and filter, but this, uh, the uh, the uh, orgasm uh, is so small, organism is so small that it, it can't, you know, eat it. You know, it, I mean, it just filters it through and it, it really gets no nourishment out of it. So that's what happens to the animal. 
and then virtually there's no recruitment. So you, the next year you have no pro, uh, no uh, uh, oncoming uh, set for to look forward to. And then what happened the first year of the brown tide with the finfish, the, the it was so brown they literally left the bay. They couldn't, you know, the, there was no juvenile bait fish, and there was, uh, you know, no uh, fish, larger fish like the uh, fluke and the uh, flounders and stuff like that. They leave the bay, so that's another thing that happens through that process of having the brown tide. So it's uh, been tough to make a living. Yeah, it's been tough to make a living. I'm always, uh, I, I always consider myself a very good salesman, and always to be on the cutting edge. And anything that happens out here, I can sell. Razor clams, skimmers, hard clams, soft clams, fish, bunkers, you know, a lot of different things. And one thing that did happen when, when the brown tide initially did happen, uh, I managed to get a large uh, amount of uh, lobster fishermen in the sound that I started selling bait out of my pound traps to. Now we all know there was a water quality issue in the sound which virtually eliminated the lobster fishery over there. So I also lost that fishery. So it, it, every time I seem to get a new fishery established, it's some kind of, you know, environmental issue comes up with water quality and uh, it kind of like uh, sets you back a little bit. You know, what's your worst fear about all of this? My worst fear is I wake up some, some morning and go to go to work and uh, either the bays are closed because of the poor water quality or that there is no, uh, there's no shellfish to catch. Uh, I would hate to catch the last shellfish. That to me is, you know, you know, being a bayman, uh, you always want to catch as much as you possibly can and make as much money. But on the other end, you never want to be able to say I caught the last hard clam or the last steamer, because it's done at that point. And then I don't know where I'd go with my life. And you know, the the few guys that are coming up behind me, they'd be out of work too. Um, it's it's a tough. It's 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 tough. That's a real worry for you that, uh, that nothing's going to be done about this pollution problem when the brown tide will just get worse, right? Well, when I graduated high school in 1977, I joined the Southampton Town Bayman's, Bayman's Association. We went to the county back then asking them to change their septic practices, which they virtually did none of. And uh, basically the septic that was there in the 70s is pretty much the same as it is right now. And one thing that has happened is the population has grown exponentially out here and uh, with more and more septic and more and more uh, you know uh, people living out here we have more and more water quality issues and it comes to a point where the pendulum just turns to a point where everything just starts to collapse and being a bayman I would never want to see that happen and having young kids and hopefully grandkids I would never want to see that happen either because I want to ensure that you know somehow through some management practices that it's there for for future generations. I am also a Southampton Town Trustee and one of our duties that we're charged with is maritime heritage and you know promoting good clean water quality and uh, you know positive things in the environment and it's really tough you have to work with uh, the town board and other uh, government agencies and they just have to con come to the concept that living on an island what we put on it eventually does end up in the water and it does harm the bays and the bays are the economic engine of the uh, whole east end out here without clean water without fishing without shell fishing and being able to swim and uh, you know recreation and commercial fish in the bay we would we would be uh, we would be like Arizona we'd just be a desert that it would be virtually you know useless so there is uh, there's a lot of stake for people who aren't paying and don't do this professional kind of stuff. What's that? There's a lot of lot at stake for people who are not famous. Oh, most here. definitely. I mean, any of the waterfront homeowners that wake up here and they want to go swimming in the bay, well, it's brown tide this year. It's, it was a red algae. They can't go shell fishing in the springtime. Well, maybe next year there'll be some kind of other algae bloom, hopefully not, that comes in. And you won't be able to swim in recreation in the bay. You won't be able to water ski. You won't be able to take the uh, fluke and the striped bass out of the water. We never know what these algae blooms are going to bring us. You know, it's every year. It's it's a, it seems to be a different one, and uh, in the last five falls, we've had like a mahogany tide in in the eastern Shinnecock Bay and in the Peconics, and that virtually chases the fish out of the bay. Being a fixed gear fisherman in the bay for you know 40 years, uh, seeing the evolution of the bay and evolution of fisheries, and see that algae take up uh, shop in my bay. And virtually you lift up a nets, a pound net, and there isn't a fish in there that's alive because it's killed all the fish. It's very disheartening.